What's up everyone? So it's Monday, August 2nd, and in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a recap of all the trades that I took on Square and Tesla. I took five, which is a little bit more than I normally like to take. Lucky enough, I had three winners, and because of that, I ended the day green. And this is gonna be a great example of letting external noise get in my head a little bit. If you look at the watch list, the main stocks I was watching today was Tesla, Amazon, LI, mRNA and NVIDIA. I was not looking at Square. Even though it did have news, I just felt like it wasn't that good of a setup on the daily. I felt like these were better. And then Benzinga Charlie in the background brought up Square saying it made a new high of day and I pulled it up, quickly did the technicals and that's why I took a trade on it. And for anybody who doesn't know what Benzinga Charlie is or is interested in accessing it, he basically is a squawk. He's talking about real-time news, whether it be economic or individually company related. So just to show you how to access it, on the top right of Thinkorswim chat rooms, click on that, and then you click on Benzinga Squawk at the bottom, and then you gotta make sure that you highlight listen, so that way you can hear it through your speakers, and that's it. I keep him up in the background every single day just to be tied to news in case there is something that's worth hearing. The really cool thing is that this is free and it does feel nice to be tied to market news, but vice versa, the negative, is that if you let it distract you like it did to me today, sometimes it can mess you up. So have to be careful with it, but overall, I think this is a great resource. Okay, now let's get into the technicals of the overall market and the watch list, starting with SPY. So a little bit of a consolidation up here. It's not very clean, but it is holding the nine EMA. So just knowing where those short-term moving averages are, the levels I was looking at prior days high, 440.06, if it gets through that, it looks like it has upside room. Also knowing all time high was above at 441.80. And if there was any weakness in the market, just knowing where prior day's low was, and that was 437.77. Okay, now the Qs, so a little bit of consolidation. It's still above the short term moving averages. It does look like a flag pattern up here. Still a little early in my opinion, but the levels that I was looking at, prior day's high, 365.17, if it gets through that, just knowing that all time high was above at 368.89, and if there was any weakness in the market, prior day's low, 362.41. Okay, now Tesla, and I had a feeling a lot of people were gonna be watching this today because of that big resistance area at 700 that it had issues getting through before. It was trading slightly above it, so it felt like it had a chance to maybe catch some momentum. The levels I was watching was that big area at 700, whole number, prior day high, 697.53, pre-market low, 692, and the next level above all of those was pre-market high at 704.74. And now Amazon, and the reason I had this up is because it got really beat up the prior day on earnings. It felt a little excessive. If this took out prior day's high and the market was strong, it felt like it could work its way into the upside gap. If it took out prior day's low, it did look like it had some downside room. So the levels I was looking at, prior day's high, prior day's low, pre-market high, and pre-market low. Okay, and LI, which is a name that I don't normally look at, the reason why I had it up is because the EV sector was trading higher, so I felt like maybe as a whole it could catch some momentum, and I felt like this daily chart looked the best outside of Tesla. Nice candle the prior day. The Really, the two levels I was looking at, because I don't want to short if this thing starts to show weakness into strength, was those upside levels, prior day's high, 34.55, it was trading slightly above it, and then the next level above was pre-market high at 35.10. And now mRNA, and the reason I had this up is because it was making a new all-time high in the pre-market. It recently caught momentum. When stocks like this continue to make new all-time highs, I want to keep them on watch. So the levels I was looking at was that all-time high, 362. The next level above, because it was trading slightly above that all-time high, was pre-market high at 363.88. Okay, and the last one on the list is NVIDIA. The reason why I like this is because it's a nice period of consolidation. It's holding the short-term moving averages. It hit this 198.50 resistance area twice. So I thought if it could go through it, kind of third time's a charm and the market is strong, maybe this could catch momentum. So the levels I was looking at was that 198.50 resistance, pre-market high, 197.50. And then also just knowing that it was trading slightly above prior day's high at 196.30. Okay, so now to go through all the trades, there's a good amount of them. So I'm just gonna go through them manually. So Square, the one thing with Square is even though this setup was all right, it did have a decent flag pattern, just realizing where it came from. This went from 248 all the way up to 266, pretty straight up. So even though that is a nice flag, just realizing it's very extended. I'm a big fan of the flag patterns, but not once a stock has gone really far, really fast, because I feel like the probability of follow through is lower or it can be a little choppy, similar to how this played out today. So I heard the news, I ended up pulling it up, I quickly looked at the daily chart and I saw this prior pivot high resistance area, 267.77, and I thought, 
If we could get through that, it does look pretty good. So I ended up waiting for a little bit of a pullback, nine EMA, held it, started to make its push towards high of day and that technical level. I went long, five contracts, the 267.50 calls. Unfortunately, the spread on square options is pretty big considering the price range that it's at. So when I got filled on it, I knew that I probably made a mistake at that moment. We just wanted to keep an eye on it, obviously. And then it pulled back a little bit, held the nine EMA, made a push towards that major technical level when it got above it and instantly rejected it just to be safe because I did not want to be involved in a pullback, maybe back down to VWAP because this did have some downside room and would still be strong on the intraday. I ended up just getting out of that trade quickly and I lost a dollar a contract. So the first trade of the day did not work out. It was a loser and I think that threw me off a little bit. Okay, now to get into the second trade on Tesla. So off the open, this pretty much just went straight up right through pre-market high. I was really hoping this could consolidate for a few minutes and then break, but stocks don't usually do what you want them to do. So now it's just about waiting for a flag pattern or some sort of technical pattern, my favorite being the flag. And I finally got it. So this had a push, it pulled back, still above the VWAP, reclaimed the nine, broke that trend line, and I ended up going long. I sized up on this. I think I had a little bit of emotions of that first trade being a loser and I wanted to get it back, but it was a good setup. So I'm trying to size up on those really good setups especially knowing that it cleared that major resistance level 700. I felt like this could catch some momentum today. And this was the first decent pattern that I saw. So I ended up going along the 715 calls, 10 of them. And I got filled at 1595, took it just before the high day break. And then when it started to speed up, I got a quick move and I ended up taking quick profits. And I ended up selling those contracts at $16 and 55 cents. Okay, now the third trade, which was on Square again, I think this should have been a no trade for me. After that first loss on this name, I should have just left it alone. But you know, sometimes when you take a loss on a name, you kind of want to revenge, you want to get that money back. It did look like a good setup. I managed risk well, but I think I was better off just avoiding it. So now to break down what I saw. Had a very nice push, a little choppy, nice flag pattern, got back above the nine EMA, above the VWAP, had a push towards high of day, I ended up going long anticipating the high of day break, knowing that it did form a nice flag. I took the 270 calls, I got filled at $6.25. It got just above the high of day, did not have follow through. I've seen this plenty of times before, it can be a fake breakout. So the moment it started to show some weakness, I got out just to be safe. And I got out of those contracts at $6.20, so a very small loss. Okay, in the final two trades, which are on Tesla, when Tesla catches momentum, I like to watch it a little bit longer than normal because sometimes it could have very nice flag patterns just a little bit later off the open. So here's what I saw. Had a nice push. It finally pulled back, got under the 9 EMA, still above VWAP, so it's very strong. Nice flag pattern. Ends up breaking that trend line. I went long, five contracts, the 725 calls. I got filled at $14.90. Pretty aggressive entry. I wanted to try to hold this for a new high of day. And when it started to show some struggle right near high of day and it started to pull back, I got out very fast and I got a quick win on this. So I ended up getting out of those at $15.15. And then the last trade, it had yet to make a new high of day. So I went for that high of day break. When it took out the high of this red candle, I ended up going long right around 725, anticipating the high of day. And I thought if it could break it, Maybe this could catch some momentum pretty quickly. So I ended up going along the 725 calls again, five of them. I got filled at $15.35. And when this pushed over high of day and then started to show a little bit of weakness just to be safe so I was not in a fake breakout, I ended up getting out pretty quick and got a small win. I sold those contracts at $15.55. And at this point, I realized that I took five trades on the day. The first one was not great. Lucky enough, I ended up getting a good setup on Tesla. I got that money back. Took really two quick scalps on that Tesla towards the highs right there. Ended up being green on the day. And I knew at that moment, I did not want to screw a good thing up. So it was time for me to just walk away. And that's exactly what I did. So now to check out the PL, ended up making $600 on the 715 calls, 225 on the 725 calls. Very small loss, 25 bucks on the 270 calls on Square, and then losing 500 on the 267.50s. Had I avoided Square altogether and not let the noise get the best of me, I would have had an $800 plus day. There is such a fine line with PL when it comes to trading, and even though the performance was not great today, the fact that I was able to pull money out of the market when I made some bad decisions, I'm pretty happy about it. So that was the trade recap. Appreciate you watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.
Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I just wanna highlight a couple really cool things that I have to offer. The first is my newsletter watch list that I'm gonna be posting on my private Twitter 30 minutes before the open of each trading day. Here's an example of what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna do a quick overview of the market, the SPY, the Qs, the upside levels, the downside levels, and then a sentence or two is to the overall bigger picture. Make sure to highlight any market news or events that are happening that day. And then I'm gonna list the four to six stocks that I'm watching that day. If there's any company specific news, all the upside levels and the downside levels, and then do a quick bigger picture, a couple sentences as to what's going on in the daily chart. This is everything that's in my head prior to market open. This is how I prepare and a really easy way to get access to my trading process. One page with everything I'm looking at, all the technical levels, and all the news delivered 30 minutes before market open in a really organized fashion. Also, I have a call service, so if you want something that's a little bit less of a commitment, you wanna connect with me directly, talk about my trading, my journey along the way, and just connect with another trader, this is really great. And this can be a video call or a regular call, whatever you're comfortable with. It's a one-time fee and it's gonna be for one hour. So if you're interested in either one of these, I will put the links in the description below.